What is going on guys, it's Bucky and welcome to your second C++ tutorial and in this tutorial what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be breaking apart this computer program that we ran in the last tutorial. So if you remember, whenever we first created a project in CodeBlocks, CodeBlocks already made a very simple computer program for us for us to run and test out just to make sure everything was working. And all it did was it printed out hello world on the screen. So if you go ahead and build and run this, we see that it just says hello world and some other computer stuff that isn't really um, relevant. But anyways, all this computer program does is print out hello world. And before I get into breaking this apart and telling you what each piece does, I want to say one thing. You would think, since computer programs are just made up of a bunch of lines of text, that we can learn each line one at a time. But computer programs are weird in that this is pretty much the most simple program you can write. And check it out, there are already seven different lines included here. So in order to even write a most basic program, you need to code at least seven lines of code. So it seems kind of confusing, and I just want to uh, give you guys a warning. As long as you can get through this video, all the rest of the videos are going to be incredibly easy. This is the only one where I have to throw a bunch of information at you, but still, I'm going to break it down as easy as possible. Uh, and the reason for that is because you need so many things in order to run such a simple program, but once you understand the basics, everything else is just smooth sailing, I promise. So let me go ahead and we're going to be getting more in depth in each of these lines, but for now, let me just give you guys a brief introduction to what each line does. Let's go ahead and start at the top and work our way down. This include IO stream line right here. This is technically called a preprocessor directive. So if you're taking a test, if you're watching these tutorials because you know maybe you're in C++ class and your teacher is kind of confusing you, answer on the test. This is a preprocessor directive. Now what that means in everyday terms is it pretty much says, all right, we're going to be including a file in this program that we're going to be using later on. So it's going to be including a file, IOStream, that we didn't make. We didn't make this file, but it needs it to run this program later on, so that's why it needed to include it. Again, we're going to be talking more about header files later on, but for the basics of this tutorial, all you need is that to know that this line includes a file that our program needs to use later on. Now, the next line you can see is just a blank line and you may say alright do you need this blank line do you not need it blank lines and spaces you can have a million of them if you want or you can have none of them just like that all blank lines do in programming is they make the program easier to read just with a book or a magazine or a newspaper sometimes you want blank lines between your code sometimes you just want your code to write under each other it's personal preference um people you know whatever you want Blank lines just make it easier to read, so whatever is easier for you, add as many lines or as less lines as you want. And that brings me to another point. These tabs, too, see this is kind of tabbed out or tabbed in, it's the same thing. Some people tap things in and make it easier to read. This program is just going to run just fine if it's just like that, but you know, people just like to line certain things up, so you'll see later on once we get coding that tabs and spaces and in blank lines, they don't really mean anything significant, they just make the program easier to read. So that being said, under that blank line is this using namespace STD, and believe it or not, this does not stand for sexually transmitted disease. I like to think that, but trust me, it doesn't. It stands for the standard library, and that's another thing that is built in to C++ that is pretty much saying this. We're going to be using all the standard things with C++, nothing fancy. Again, we're going to be going over libraries and stuff in the future, but basically these two lines include things that we're going to need later on. This includes a file, and this includes something called a library, which, you know, is just a bunch of C++ stuff. So with that being said, we know that these two lines include things. Fair enough. So now let's get to the meat and uh, I don't know meat and potatoes, I guess, of the computer programming, and that's this. This entire thing is called a function. Now all computer programs are made up of functions, and all functions are are things you want the computer to do. For example, whenever we're making programs later on, we're going to make a function to play sounds, and we're going to make a function to draw graphics on the screen. And as you can see, functions are just things that you want the computer 
to do. So every computer program starts with a function called main. This is how your computer knows where to start. So for example, in a couple tutorials we're going to have a function called main and like I said we're going to have another function called play a sound and we're going to have another function called make a ball bounce around on the screen and you're going to have all these functions and your computer is going to say alright you gave me all this stuff to do but how do I know what order to do them in well your computer automatically knows anytime it runs a program to start with the main function so that's why it's so crucial to name this function main so in order to make a function you do this you first write what type of data you're going to be working with and what functions typically typically do is they do some sort of calculations for example find the body mass index or calculate the velocity of something well whenever it makes this calculation it usually wants a number back an answer in other words well since we're going to be working with just integers main always works with integers so that's why we need that but again we'll be getting into that later on after that is the name of the function and this one is named main um, don't worry about these parentheses right now but what we do need to worry about is these little uh, they're not semicolons squiggly brackets I, can't, I guess they're called curly braces I don't know whatever the heck they are and this has an opening and a closing curly brace and in between them you have something called statements now all functions are made up of statements and all statements are, are basically instructions and each instruction needs to end with a semicolon that's why you see every line inside a function ends with a semicolon for example if you had a function that says make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich one statement would be get out the bread the next statement would be put butter on a piece of bread. The next statement would be put jelly on a piece of bread. The next, put them together. The last, put them in your mouth. Bam. You now have a function and a series of statements. Well, all this function did, the main one said, print out something on the screen and return zero. Simple enough. So now you can see the basics of a function, how they're made, and how every function needs to include statements or instructions. So that being said, let's break this down even more. The first statement is saying this. First of all, the C out thing right here, that's called an output stream object. And it's basically used to write characters on the computer screen. That's how we are able to type hello world on the computer screen. So this is always used in conjunction with this. This is called the stream insertion operator. This pretty much takes all the stuff to the right of it and prints it out on the screen. I mean, this is just, uh, you know, it's weird uh, symbols, but that's what, whoever made C++, they decided to use these weird symbols to print out something on a screen. Why they did, I don't know. You have to take it up with them. But anyways, this is basically how you print out stuff in the screen. So this prints out hello world, and then this pretty much just means end line or go to the next line. So this line right here is pretty much just saying print something out on the screen. Now this last thing I want to talk to you guys about is called the return statement. Now, usually, like I said, functions will calculate something like body mass index or velocity, and when they calculate it, it's going to want an answer back. So if I had a function that calculated my weight, it would return 155 or 160, depending on if I ate tacos or not today. Well, the main function should always have return zero, and return zero means whenever you return zero it tells your program that it ran fine without any errors for example if you had a bunch of extra text right here your computer program would give you an error and it would never get to this line right here so it would never return zero so whenever it does get to this line it means everything above it ran fine and return zero means you are good to go main ran fine so I know that was a lot of information <laughs> to give to you guys for just your first tutorial but again, like I said, every computer program starts with a bunch of stuff that you need to know. And we're going to be covering each more of these topics in depth. But for now, I just want to give you guys a basic understanding of how a computer program is made. So if you don't understand everything completely, then don't worry. You're not alone. You will in the future, I promise. But for now, thank you for sticking with me. And uh, thank you for watching this tutorial. And I can't wait to see you in the next tutorial. And if you have any questions, don't forget to check out my website, thenewboston.com. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video.